Hey everybody. So I'm going to teach you how to use the spiritual gifts, all right? Um, so there's a starting premise, and that is this, that all of the gifts are provided by the Holy Spirit for everyone to use, okay? Anyone can access these gifts with faith and seeking, and we learn that um, through Scripture, and I outline that in uh, my other video called The Spiritual Gifts Are for Everyone, okay? So you can watch that if you want to see why that is scripturally accurate, um, but if you're just going to take my word for it, then we'll move forward. So, the gifts are supposed to edify the church. That's 1 Corinthians 14, 12, okay? The goal is to build up people's faith, to build up people's relationship with God, okay? Bring unbelievers into the church, okay? And, and build up the church that's that's already there. The gifts can be stirred up in 2 Timothy 1, 6, okay? That means that we have a control over how the gifts are moving through us, okay? God has his will in our life, and we decide whether you can step into it or not. And you can be flat and stagnant, or you can be fired up and stirred up, okay? Um, this is about preparing our hearts and minds for service, okay? Renewing your mind, getting your heart right and in line with God. And, and that's really what, what makes the gifts flow and makes us effective for the body of Christ. Um we have a degree of control over these gifts. You know, God provides them and he guides up us with them. Um, but we we also have to work with him. And it's really a co-mission. It's a commission, okay? Um, if you watch the other video, then you know that God willingly provides these. And just like with salvation, you know, he's made the provision, but we have to, we have to change and step into that, okay? Especially in faith. Um, it's our job to now seek these gifts as we're told to and and have them operating in the church through us. Um, just to uh, address people's objections, yes, God moves sovereignly through the through the church and through people, okay, if you believe that sovereignty even is defined that way. Um, sometimes God does things on his own. Okay, sometimes he finds a, a brand new rookie believer who happened to pray for something that God wanted to get done. And, and you know, through that prayer, God goes, goes and does a miracle, you know, or he speaks to somebody who needs a very clear direction, you know. Um, sometimes he does that. But overall, God has provided to and trusted the church with the gifts to operate them, to eagerly pursue them, and to use them effectively, okay? We are told in the Bible to cleanse the lepers, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils, okay? We're, we're told that those who believe will pray in tongues and will lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover. We're told to e eagerly pursue the spiritual gifts, okay? That's twice in 1 Corinthians, okay? And, and in 1 Corinthians um, 3, 1 through 3, Paul calls the, the Corinthian church worldly and carnal and babies who need milk, okay? So if he's telling these guys to go and use the gifts to build themselves up, I mean, that means anyone can use the gifts. You don't have to be like a mature superstar believer, okay? You can just be a regular old rookie Christian and get it done. I actually began in the healing gift in my first year of uh, of being a Christian. Um, I transformed my life, moved out of where I was, um, and uh, and... Then I got healed, and I heard about this healing stuff. I saw miracles. I'm like, that's God, because this stuff is medically impossible. You know, this stuff I'm hearing about these testimonies, like, this stuff's medically impossible. And so my faith rose up, and uh, I got healed. I started laying hands on people, and it started working. And all I did was I watched it on YouTube and watching people lay hands on people on YouTube, and I went and did that, and it worked. Just I just had faith for it. It's it. It's, it's, it's simple, okay? And... um. All the gifts have worked that way, you know, um, and anybody who's really good at the gifts, they usually have, you know, that kind of story. Like, well, I just went and tried to do it and it started working. Well, that's all you have to do. It, it, it's, it's, uh, it, sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's not. And, and, but not all the gifts come easy to everybody, but we're still told to use them, right? So, um, let's move on to how. We do these gifts. How would you go about learning one, okay? Um, 
faith and seeking, okay? In the other video, we established that all things work through faith and seeking as far as gifts go, okay? Salvation's a gift received by faith. You, you seek it out, you hear the preaching, you receive the word in faith. Um, the Holy Spirit, you know, in the Bible, in Luke writes, ask, seek, and knock, and you'll receive the Holy Spirit, okay? Um, then the gifts, same way, faith and seeking. So, you gotta have faith for it. You gotta believe that it's possible for you to do it, okay? Um, ask, seek, and knock. Ask God, okay? Knock, 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 knock. Persistently, okay? Knock until that door opens, okay? Seek, okay? Um, you can seek things by tr faithfully trying to use the gifts, okay? Trying to get words, trying to, to hear things accurately, trying to lay hands on people, okay? Trying to speak in tongues. Practice, practice, practice. Right, a lot of these gifts they work with experience. They are, well, they don't work with experience. They work better with experience. You 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 take you know the framework of what what you're given. You the framework of God's power, and you start to just kind of learn how to uh, how to work with with the people you're ministering to, and how to communicate effectively with them to get a message across or to get the the healing um, to manifest. Um, a lot of times it's just in healing, it's just a matter of getting them to hold still long enough for you to do your job, you know, like just, just hold still for one minute and let me, let me heal you. Okay. Like that's it for words of knowledge. It's, uh, a lot of times in, in prophecies, it's a lot of times in an interpretation issue that, that is where we actually, um, seem to be failing. It's usually we're hearing correctly, but we interpret it wrong. And then, then, then that messes up the word that actually did come from God. So that just takes experience a lot of times, you know. I learned from failure in a lot of ways on how to hear God's voice and speak it out proper, properly, okay. Um, you reap what you sow. Sow good seeds, you'll reap what, what you get out of it, okay. Um, some other ways to learn would be reading books, audiobooks. I do a ton of audiobooks. Just put them on the car every day when I go to, to and from work. I get an hour of audiobook in a day that way. So it, you can just, you can run through books that way and just really get built up pretty fast with that. I, I buy CDs also. Um, I, uh, I have an MP3 player that is just full of uh, teaching on the gifts and spiritual warfare and uh, certain teachings that I wanted to access. Okay. Um, I listen to testimonies, and I watch um, live healings on YouTube, and I watch um, prophecy and words of knowledge on YouTube, and I, I see what's possible, and it builds up my faith, you know, and I see how they do it, and, and I say, okay, here's what they, you know, I can kind of feel out what, what they heard or saw, and I'm getting a sense of how God is capable of working in people, and that, and that give, you know, kind of shows me what else is possible for me. Um, reading scripture. 1 Corinthians 12 through 14 has a lot on the gifts. Um, the prophets have a lot on prophecy and hearing God's voice and prayer. Um, the Psalms actually has a lot on, on you know, uh, hearing God's voice. Um, the Gospels and Book of Acts have a lot on healing and deliverance and um, power, okay? Um, and you, you can mimic these guys and mimic other people that you see operating in the gifts, okay? Um, Jesus never taught healing. The, the apostles just did what he did. Okay. Um, scripture affirmations, super useful. I, I walk around saying, believers will lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover. Believers will lay hands on the sick and the sick will recover. When I lay hands on the sick, the sick will recover because I'm believing. Okay. When I touch people, when I'm touching patients, even if I'm just taking their vital signs, they're receiving healing because I'm laying hands on them and because I believe it. Because the prayer of faith heals the sick, okay? Um, test. Try and test, 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 okay? Um, test your words. Um, one time I heard that um, somebody I worked with, their brother had cancer. So I went to this person who's, you know, kind of older. So I said, are, are your siblings still alive? And they're like, yeah, 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 I got a brother and a sister. Um, oh, are, are, how's it? How's it out? They doing all right? And they're like, "Well, my brother just came down with cancer," and I'm like, "Oh." <laughs> so you know, test see if you're hearing God right. If it's not true, then you're, that's not how you hear God. If it is true, then you then you try to remember how you heard it and try to keep listening in that way. Okay, and then you learn how you can be obedient to the Spirit that way too. You know, you learn how to follow follow leadings when when they're uh, when they're accurate like that. 
um, tongues. Tongues builds us up in the spirit, and being built up in the spirit makes all the gifts happen. You know, um, it really it just it just makes you more unified with God. You know, everything is better when you're doing tongues a lot. Okay, so pray in tongues a lot. Your health's gonna be better. Your emotions will be better. You'll feel better. You'll be healthier, happier. Um, the gifts will flow, your union with God will just increase, your love for God and people will increase. It's just, it's a wonderful thing to be built up in the Spirit, okay? Um, you could also, if you want to hear God's voice accurately, I found just sitting in silence, just, just sitting and listening, just having those internal spiritual ears open to God and just sitting quietly and just listening to Him, Okay? And, and sometimes he's got some really awesome stuff to say, okay? I mean, he's he, he's prophesied over me himself and sometimes, and, the, and they've become accurate, you know? And uh, and and he just, he tells you awesome things. He just, he tells you he loves you. And you feel his heart, and he, he's just a father to a son. <laughs> um, I've also heard that interpreting your tongues is useful. I, I've done it, but I don't do it often. But um, interpreting tongues is useful to practice prophecy because you've got something to hear and cling on to, being the tongues you speak out, and then you you know we can write it down or something, um, or you can interpret someone else's tongues. That's really how it, that's meant to be used. But you can do interpret your own. Um, in First Corinthians thirteen, the, the, you get this beautiful, famous passage on love. Okay, one of the most famous parts of the Bible, I would say. Um, and that's really right inside all these teachings on the gift that gifts that Paul is giving, okay? And so the whole point is use the gifts in love. Um, you you can't really fail if you're using the gifts in love, you know. Uh, even if they you don't see any healing happen, even if you know you messed up the word big time, um, if you're showing the person that you care and you build them up, and even if you're pushing them just a little bit closer to God, you've done a good thing. Okay, uh, bringing people closer to God is it's what it's all about because uh, because being close to God is is the most wonderful thing in the world. We are created to be close to God, and and a lot of people aren't. So you know you're 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 encouraging people to be who they're supposed to be when you push people closer to God. Um, and the these gifts really do push people closer to God. Um, they build up the church. They build up people's faith. They build up their their hunger for God. And people go after the gifts. Man, they run so much harder. I can tell you, um, I've been tempted to sin at times and decided that I am definitely going to avoid this habit or or falling into this trap again for the sake of the fact that I heal the sick and I'm a nurse and I work with sick people and. Uh, and quite frankly, uh, I, I, uh, I walk in greater holiness because I know that my walk with God is is important, and how close I am to Him is going to matter in in these patients' lives. You know, I have a responsibility, and if you take responsibility for something, you're you're going to work a lot harder for it. Okay. And uh, I, I, these gifts have definitely brought me closer to God. Uh, they've brought me to an understanding of his reality, okay? Um, that when the power works through you or when a word is accurate, you just see how real he is. And you go, you know what? I really got to make sure that I'm walking straight because this is the this is legit. You know, this Bible is legitimate because I, I'm seeing it work, you know? Um I've ended up with having a lot of testimonies of healings, and it's just I've been able to give those testimonies to people and encourage them in faith, and it just it just rolls, it rolls along, and and it snowballs, and you get better at the gifts as you go, and and, and as soon as you get good at one gift, the other ones start flowing with it, and they're all easier to use. It's like you just got to get over that first hurdle and get running, and as soon as you start running, and as soon as you get over that first hurdle, it just snowballs, and all the gifts become easier and effective, and it's exciting and it's fun and it's just awesome i can tell you guys prophecy i, I never pursued prophecy okay not on my own I, I pursued healing out of my own desire that's what i wanted to do i didn't care about any other gifts prophecy i was like yeah it's just words i don't care right but as i matured and i kept reading the bible i, I realized okay prophecy is we're supposed to prophesy it says it right here in the bible you know moses encourages his followers to prophesy paul encourages the church to prophesy um, 
And Jesus says that believers will hear his voice, like, and I'm like, this is important. So I guess I'll, you know, go after prophecy out of obedience rather than my own desires. So I obeyed God, and I found a prophecy to be just so mind-blowing, like an amazing gift. I'm talking like I'd go and write something down about somebody, I'd give it to them, and then he'd say, that's true about my past, that's true about my past, this is true about my present and then because they realize that I accurately heard their past and present, then when I give them prophetic guidance for their future, they understand that that word is from God and that that's the direction they should go in. And, I mean, blows my mind every time. But imagine how, where they're at, you know? Imagine how their faith is exploded. And they're like, wow, this is a word from God. Amazing, right? So these gifts just, they really do build us up. And, and I can't encourage you guys enough to do it, okay? And and the gifts work with one another, you know? Hearing God's voice is words of wisdom, words of knowledge, and prophecy, and they can, they're kind of all the same. Even discerning of spirits kind of enters that, and um, working of miracles and healing kind of go hand in hand also sometimes. So the gifts aid each other, and, and it really all snowballs once you get going. So I just, I hope this has encouraged you to be successful in these and to, and to seek these in faith. And I hope you're all edified and blessed by this teaching. Um, so God bless you all. I pray that you're all successful in this. Amen.